welcome back to Mushroom Adventures. In this episode, we're going to construct our very own walk-in cooler. Now, that might seem like uh, an impossible task, being as when you go to a restaurant, you see their walk-in coolers. It's a very large unit with uh, metal walls and a commercial grade evaporator and condensing unit. But for our purposes, what we're going to do is build a frame using two by sixes, a standard 16 on center spacing. We're going to use uh, the high quality six inch thick insulation to give uh, a good R value. And we're going to use a very large air conditioner you see here, this is actually a 24,000 BTU, um, a great deal at walmart.com, I'll, I'll post a link, that's actually uh, just the same price as a 14,000 BTU at the moment. Um, but what we're going to do is use a conventional window air conditioner that has a digital display, and we're going to use a special kind of unit. Here's the device that I will be using to turn my regular style window AC unit into a unit that is suitable for a walk-in cooler. This is called the CoolBot. It is from storecold.com. That's the, uh, the site that I ordered it from. And what this does, it's really simple actually. It has a little heater unit that comes off of it that you wrap some foil around the temperature sensor of your air conditioner. And it raises the temperature of the sensor it makes the AC unit think that the surrounding air temperature is probably about 100 degrees or more. I, I noticed when I, I try it out that it does raise it high. It also has a sensor for the actual room temperature inside the cooler. And then it has a, another sensor to put into the fins of the evaporator coil. And it detects uh, whether or not ice is getting built up. And what happens is, when ice forms on the coil, because you're, you're running this AC unit harder than it normally would in a smaller room, when ice forms on the coils, the cool bot turns off the heater and thus allows the window unit to blow just standard air across the coils and melt all the ice, or basically evaporate all the ice off. And as soon as the ice is gone, um, it checks whether or not the temperature needs to come back down and it kicks the AC unit right back on. So it's a really handy unit. It's really simple in its design. I paid $300 for it. Now it seems pricey for something that simple, but uh, you know, it's, you can't find it anywhere else. It is patent pending. Now if you're really high tech person, you might actually be able to build your own style device with a Arduino unit and uh, some other sensor parts. But you know, these people have already put the work into it. It has some uh, multiple settings to fine tune the system uh, just in case uh, the ice is getting built up on the coils and it's not detecting it and vice versa. So I'll be testing this, this unit, make sure it works properly. Um, I'll have an outlet inside the cooler to power it up and let's see uh, how this all runs. The first thing I've had to do is remove these old aluminum framed windows that was in this garage. Now you could do this in an outdoor shed, a basement, anywhere where you're going to have a window accessible to put a window based air conditioner in it. You don't want to use the, uh, the standing up AC units like this one. That won't work because the, uh, the return hose produces too much heat and the, it just produces too much excess heat to make it worthwhile. But you see here I've filled in the, uh, the gap where the aluminum frame sunk in with some cement, caulked up the, uh, any other gaps, and I built a good heavy frame out of treated 2x4s that the uh, 
AC unit is going to slide right into here. Uh, at least the case part is first with these large ones. And then you screw the case into the frame and then slide the heavier parts into it. Also, too, I have a supporting kit that I can attach to this frame and sticks out that will hold the back end of the AC unit um, from tipping down too far uh, against the side of the house and being too much weight. Now the maximum space I can get out of here is about 14 feet long by 6 inches. You can see where this blue line is on the wall. That's when it comes up to the uh, breaker box. Um, there actually is a code uh, to how close of an item you can build to your breaker box, so make sure you check with your state laws and see what that is. You definitely cannot build it over it or anything like that in nature, so uh, be aware of that. But my plan is to build it 14 feet 5 inches or so long this way, and then 5 feet out, and about 8 feet tall. Now that will give me an interior dimension of about 4 feet out and about 7 feet high, which is plenty of room to put these kind of style garage shelves in them, or a similar style. These ones probably better just because you can take them apart and put them together inside easily. And then 7 feet up, you just stack them up with mushroom boxes, and as long as you have room to walk down it one way, that's all you need, and you can get as much in there as you possibly can. Way more than buying, say, a three-door or so grocery-style cooler, which was what my original plan was to do. But if you get an idea of that, that unit would probably only come to maybe the edge of this window, and then only about a, a foot and a half out. So. That's really not a whole lot of space when you can compare it to a large open walk-in cooler space. So Definitely the way I have to go because I'm planning to have some much larger production and expand and refrigerators just aren't going to cut it for my purposes. Now you see here I have my framing. This will be the, the back wall that I'm using two by six by eight feet long sections of untreated wood. They're spaced 16 on center because we're going to use standard 15 inch wide house insulation. And it'll get all the way to the end and down at this end I'll have to space it right so that I'm not uh, putting boards over the AC unit. So I'll have to do a little bit of measuring and work there. But the basic idea is I'll build two of these frames of this size, one against the wall and the one in the front. The, the bottom will be a four foot wide section that will sit in between these two frames, as well as the top will be another four foot wide section. And then two four foot wide sections for the interior, uh, well, for the walls on the left and right here you see that'll fit in between these uh, two larger frames as well. The outside of it will get plywood. Um, I haven't thought too much on the interior yet. I might either go with just the uh, reflective styrofoam boards because they have the styrofoam on one side and then like a, a mylar on the outside. Um, I might even go with uh, the material they use to easily put in uh, bathrooms or whatnot that's like the uh, the white plastic that has the, uh, the seam to it they just keep putting the panels up but uh, I'll look more into that when I get closer hopefully this isn't going to take me longer than uh, two weeks or so and I'm going to keep track of all my bills and expenses for this so I can give you a good idea of what my costs were and what you could expect uh, for your own project. So I've got my air conditioner installed into my window frame. It fit nice and snug with just just enough vertical play that the bottom sinks down just enough so that water will drip out. 
as it condenses. Now all the remaining space is going to get filled in with glass block window here in a couple weeks. You can see over here that because this is a large air conditioner I had to install a 220 outlet. The style you see here where it has one of the uh, uh, poles on a horizontal level. You see here. Um, I had a hard time finding these at Lowe's. They weren't in the same section as the 220 stuff. It was actually uh, in the top row of all the uh, other outlets, all the basic outlets. So that's where you'll find that. But it has the two poles, the, the left leg and the right leg from the 220 and the ground. And I've already ran it up here, cut a hole through the 2x4 and dropped it down to the uh, circuit breakers. Where I got a new circuit breaker here. 20 amp double pole, the square D, but you know, whatever yours is. If you don't know how to put a breaker in and wire this up, don't do it yourself unless you feel uh, competent to learn how, but uh, go find somebody else. But I plugged this in and it's working good. Um, I probably let it run for an hour or so just to give it a test to make sure the air conditioner isn't faulty. But on to the next step. I have my CoolBot device running. I'm giving it a test before I put it all together. You see here it says that the area temperature is 60 degrees, which it is. It's about morning. Everything's functioning normally. You see that the air conditioner thinks it's, thinks it is 99 degrees because this uh, heater coming off the cool bot is warming up the temperature sensor on the air conditioner. So the AC is going to run uh, pretty much as much as it possibly can. And then you can see here the other wire that goes into the bottom area of the fins to, to test to see if there's ice forming up on the evaporator coils and to turn the heater off allow the air conditioner unit to de-ice and get a rest.